our greatest need. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Acts 1.8 These words of Jesus have lost none of their force. Our Savior calls for faithful witnesses in these days of religious formalism. But how few, even among the professed ambassadors for Christ, are ready to give a faithful personal testimony for their Master. Many can tell what the great and good men of generations past have done, and dared, and suffered, and enjoyed. They become eloquent in setting forth the power of the gospel, which has enabled others to rejoice in trying conflicts and to stand firm against fierce temptations. But while so earnest in bringing forward other Christians as witnesses for Jesus, they seem to have no fresh, timely experience of their own to relate. Ministers of Christ, what have you to say for yourselves? What soul conflicts have you experienced that have been for your good, for the good of others, and for the glory of God? You who profess to be proclaiming the last solemn message of mercy to the world, what is your experience in the knowledge of the truth, and what has been its effects upon your own hearts? Does your character testify for Christ? Can you speak of the refining, ennobling, sanctifying influence of the truth as it is in Jesus? What have you seen? What have you known of the power of Christ? This is the kind of witness for which the Lord calls, in which the churches are suffering. Without a living faith in Christ as a personal Savior, it is impossible to make your faith felt in a skeptical world. If you would draw sinners out of the swift running current, your own feet must not stand on slippery places. We need constantly a fresh revelation of Christ, a daily experience that harmonizes with his teachings. High and holy attainments are within our reach. Continual progress and knowledge and virtue is God's purpose for us. His law is the echo of his own voice, giving all to the invitation, Come up higher, be holy, holier still. Every day we may advance in perfection of Christian character. Those who are engaged in service for the Master need an experience much higher, deeper, broader than many have yet thought of having. Many who are already members of God's great family know little of what it means to behold His glory and to be changed from glory to glory. Many have a twilight perception of Christ's excellence and their hearts thrill with joy. They long for a fuller, deeper sense of the Savior's love. Let these cherish every desire of the soul after God. The Holy Spirit works with those who will be worked, molds those who will be molded, fashions those who will be fashioned. Give yourselves the culture of spiritual thoughts and holy communings. You have seen but the first rays of the early dawn of His glory. As you follow on to know the Lord, you will know that the path of righteous is as the light of dawn that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Proverbs 4, 18, Revised Version.